thing to, to get our heads around is that power isn't just one thing for Foucault. So when we think of power in society, we probably think of the government or the police, you know, top down power dictating to people what they can do and what they can't do and locking them up in prison if they don't do the right thing, that sort of thing. Um, for Foucault, that's only one sort of power, and it's probably not the most interesting sort of power. He calls that sovereign power. And he says that was the primary type of power up until about the 17th century. So you had this uh, monarch at the top of society, um, and the monarch basically could say, I'm going to make you now fight in my army. I'm going to take your taxes away from you. I'm going to exert that sort of uh, sovereign power over you. But basically, the monarch left you alone um, unless he or she needed you uh, for your um, body in the army or for your, for your taxes. And he says, what, what happened is, as we get into the modern age, there's a new sort of power, a subtler sort of power that emerges in society. And he calls it disciplinary power. Mm -hmm. And he says it's paradigm is the um, military parade ground. So before this period, armies were just mobs, basically, um, that, that rampaged around and, and didn't have a great deal of training. But, but now people realize that efficiency is the key to military victory. If you can load and fire a musket quicker than the enemy, there's a good chance you're going to beat them. And if you're more organized than the enemy, there's a good chance you're going to beat them. And so you start drilling very precise movements on the military parade ground. Everybody stands exactly the same. Everybody moves at exactly the same time. And you refine and make efficient, as, as efficient as you can, all those movements. And he says that idea of disciplining the body and of regulating its movements actually filters out into the whole of society. Um, and so you get a very regimented timekeeping regime that comes in in this period as well. Um, and you um, have schools where, where the body is disciplined as well. You sit down at the same time, you stand up at the same time, you only speak when you're spoken to. And, and this idea of disciplinary power is much more he calls it capillary. You imagine uh, thousands and thousands of little capillaries in the body. It's not one huge artery coming down from the monarch, but it's lots of institutions in society, all disciplining your body, essentially, in particular ways to make it more efficient. And so the value of efficiency comes through very strongly at this period. Um, and then later on, you, you get the idea uh, of biopower, uh, as you mentioned earlier. Uh, coming in, uh, which is a much more, um, a much stronger sense uh, of um, uh, allowing someone um, uh, to live uh, until and unless uh, that becomes uh, inefficient uh, for society. Um, and, and so the control in each of these steps becomes more, if you like, invasive. It, it might look less spectacular, you know, so the monarch torturing people because they, they're seditious or whatever is, is very dramatic, but the, the monarch leaves you alone for most of your life. Mm -hmm. That's, that was the sovereign power. In disciplinary power, it starts to become much more what you do in your everyday life is, is controlled and is subject to power and subject to what Foucault calls normalization. You're made to conform to the norm. And then biopower again is even more intrusive. Um, so Foucault says it looks like we're freer than we've ever been in society, uh, but actually power is much more insidious now uh, and gets into our bones much more now than it has done in the past.